listed as number one over Christopher Brooks. Can you explain what's going on there? Uh, there's really not much to explain. They're all going to play. I mean, they're all going to have. I know the depth chart is always a highly anticipated, but in my mind, those came in and Chris, they're both starters. They're, you know, depending on the play call, you might see the one guy run in first. Uh, and it's going to be uh, spread out at that position. And we're fortunate to have more than one guy that can, can help us at running back. So uh, I expect Christopher Brooks to have a, a great season. He's going to—he's done some great things in camp, as has Damian Moore, as has Marcel and Carlos, all those guys. So. What has Damian done in particular that, that jumps out to you? Oh, I think he's, uh, in terms of his all-around game, uh, running the ball, protection, catching the ball, he, uh, very instinctive as a, as a runner. Just since he's been here, kind of each and every week seems to get a little better and better, you know. And uh, I just think he's done a really nice job at camp and solid performer. And I'd say the same for Chris. You know, Chris Brooks has just been uh, staying healthy. That's always been the, he's had some unfortunate uh, injuries along the way. And so we want to do a great job of making sure we're real, you know, thoughtful about. His carries and reps and where he where we get him the ball, but he's done a done a really nice job at Camden. You do have uh, Ryan Glover as the primary backup yeah. at quarterback. Uh, what has he done to earn that role? I think he's played a lot of college football and he's picked it up uh, very quickly here. You can, you know, he's a very uh, very very smart guy. He has experience, maybe not here, but he has college football experience. And, uh, the transition went pretty quickly for him. However, I feel, we feel good about Zach Johnson and his progress. Same with Robbie Rowell. And, I mean, we don't put everybody on there, but Robbie's done some really good things in camp. This is Kai Milner. I mean, Kai just doesn't have the same experience as the other guys, but Kai has a, has a lot of tools. And he's going to continue to improve the more and more he plays. And you have your uh, base listed on here in 11 personnel. Is that something you're going to use more of this season compared to maybe a 12 or – Otherwise, no. Again, I, I know how anticipated these things are, but we tried it for the sake of not running out of room because we would list all those. You're going to see more than three tight ends play. I mean, you're going to see uh, you'll see Nick Alton play, see Mojo. You're going to see Jermaine Terry. You're going to see Kalecki. So we just start running out of room. So, and I know the anticipation on the depth chart. Is, uh, maybe we should just get a bigger piece of paper and we can list them all. Those guys are all going to play. We just have very little excitement in our lives. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you a, yeah. about the quarterback situation? Yeah. Obviously, if, if the worst happened and you had to play Ryan for a long period of time, he's got the experience to, to do that. But if you're in a situation in a game where the game is at hand and, and you've got it under control and you want to just give some guys some reps, are, will you be tempted to Maybe play Zach in that situation some because it's a, you, you bring up a great point. Prepared for next yeah, year we too. talk about all these things. Uh, really, what you, exactly what you're getting at, and so depending on what the situation is in the game, it might not play out exactly like that. What's on paper? Because the, the game's dynamic and things are changing, and we got to make decisions based on what's best for our team in that moment. Uh, what's best for the player? So. There could be a situation where, yeah, what you know, Ryan didn't go in the game next, but there's just uh, we don't really list all the different scenarios on the paper again. So, but depending on what the scenario is, yeah. you would possibly be looking ahead to what you want to have for next year, and, and in terms of getting some guys some reps. Yeah, all of the above. You're exactly right. You are, you're exactly right. So, well, Stanley is uh, listed as one of those guys. Is yep. there a big gap between him and the other guys, or? They're all going to play. I mean, Luke Beckett's going to play, obviously. Stanley, J.H., uh, Jaden Roberts is going to play. Ethan Saunders is going to play. Ricky Correa is going to play. Darius Long is probably going to play. Derek Wilkins likely to play. So, You like the fact that you not only have more depth there, but it looks like you have a lot more size in the middle. Yeah, there's bigger bodies, no doubt. <clears throat> there's just a lot of guys who are very inexperienced. You know, you look at the defensive line group, Luke Beckett's played – a lot of football, no doubt. J.H. has played quite a bit, but the rest of them, 
haven't played hardly at all. And so it's a, a lot of young guys who are going to be getting their first significant game experience. And it's behind an experienced group just on your defense as a whole. I think you only have two guys who are younger than fourth year uh, starting for you. How much does that experience mean for your defense right now? Yeah, I mean, the more you play and the more comfortable you get, those every time you're out there uh, you know, gaining that experience, you're learning something. And so having, having those guys, uh, you know, kind of a, the comfort that they have playing in the scheme, playing in games, uh, there's really no substitute for that. However, we also got to, got to go out and, and execute really well. You know, just because you're experienced doesn't make you a good player. It doesn't make you a good defense. You have to go out and execute the calls and play at a high level because, you know, week in and week out, uh, the competition is so strong. So it's a good thing to have those guys. Uh, we're really glad they're here, and now we got to go out and compete and play well. Back to the defensive line, I don't see uh, Almanado, though. Is that just a case you need more paper? Uh, <laughs> no, Aaron. Uh, Likely won't be up this week. Uh, we'll see where he's at next week. Yep. Anybody else in that category? Everybody else right now that's on here. I mean, is anybody else you want to ask specifically about? Get some surround sound. Did you turn that on? Is that on your phone? Is that your Spotify? Uh, so, yeah, anybody specifically that you're thinking about? Accompanied by this beautiful music. Yeah, trying to figure it out. Move on here. Um, regarding Nevada, and this is going to be one of those kinds of questions that drives folks crazy, but they've had some success against Cal historically in the last two meetings, which were a long time ago before your guys were in high school. Yeah. Yeah, they beat Cal. Do your guys have the appropriate respect for them and think that they need to have? And have you, have you even talked about that at all, or is that too long ago? Yeah, we don't talk about the, the games of the past. We talk about the, the team we're facing. Uh, we talk about you know, the challenge that's in front of us and then the opportunity for us to go out and compete, which is why we practice and work out all year is for these you know, few opportunities. So I have uh, no concern whatsoever that our team would overlook anybody. I mean, we're just not wired that way. Our players aren't wired that way. We don't talk that way. Uh, we have a kind of respect for Nevada. We know what kind of talent they have, what kind of team they have. Um, and ultimately, it's going to be how we go out and play. Uh, I, I don't, yeah. Do you understand the 12? No. no uh, that was before you got here. Uh, correct. The was, I guess, after. You know, 2012? It was 10 and 12 the last time Cal played. Yeah, I was, I was here in 2003, 4, 5. Oh, way before. Yeah, way before. Yeah. <laughs> so right in Jeff's second, third, and fourth years? Yes. Sure you've been asked a lot about the, their quarterback this mm -hmm. week. What, what are your impressions of Strong? Uh, very accurate. Uh, he throws the ball short, intermediate, and long. I mean, he, he really got all those throws in his arsenal. Uh, but I mean, when you look at the completion percentage and throws under 15 yards, I mean, it is exceptionally high. He's a very accurate passer, uh, and not that it's not good down the field, but I, I think it's just you know, exceptionally high, you know, 15 and under. So he does a great job running their offense. Uh, they have some really good skill at, at, on offense, but um, he makes it go, there's no doubt. He's a Northern California kid. I know he didn't play, I believe, his senior, senior year. year. Injury. Yeah. Were you guys aware of him? Did you recruit him? Yeah, the injury thing, I do remember, we talked about this um, in the last hour. You know, he, he did have an injury his senior year, and you know, there's, you'd love to recruit everybody from Northern California. It doesn't always work out that way. And, uh, yeah, we, we knew about him, and, uh, you know, there's things happen in recruiting each and every year, but he's had a, he's had a heck, of, heck of a career, and uh, we know uh, he's going to be a great challenge for our defense Saturday night facing him. Anybody else for coming?